Hello and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 63. We have a great and a super important case for radiology education and the core exams. We want to go ahead and get started. We have two views of the left wrist here, and there are definitely important findings here. And I want to uh, get to the actual question that I have here. So what's the most likely diagnosis here? Is this a case of osteoarthritis, pyrophosphate arthropathy, hemochromatosis, or gout? What's the most likely diagnosis here? Well, first of all, I think it's important to understand that we have some chondrocalcinosis, right? So we can see that there's calcification outlining the TFCC or the triangular fibrocartilaginous complex right here. And we also have some chondrocalcinosis within the lunotriquetral ligament. So that finding in itself is not diagnostic of any particular entity. In fact, all four of these entities can have chondrocalcinosis, osteoarthritis, pyrophosphate arthropathy, hemochromatosis, or gout can all have chondrocalcinosis. So that leaves us somewhat stuck. So then I guess then the question becomes, well, then where are there other findings? Well, if we take a look here, there's a lot of degenerative changes in the form of subchondral sclerosis, joint space loss, and osteophytes here at the radiocarpal or radioscaphoid joint, and a little bit at the distal radial ulnar joint. We can see some subchondral sclerosis and spurs here, right? So um, there's even some like subchondral cyst here along the lunate, a little bit on the scaphoid here. And relative preservation of the triscaphy and the first CMC joints, right? You can see that the articulation between the scaphoid, trapezium, trapezoid, and as well as the trapezium and the base of the first metacarpal, those two joints are spared. And that's an important finding because osteoarthritis, the two most common joints that are involved in osteoarthritis in the wrist are the triscaphy and the first CMC joints. And we have an absence of degenerative changes at these locations. The degenerative changes are most pronounced here at the radiocarpal joint, making pyrophosphate arthropathy the most likely diagnosis because the degenerative changes of subchondral sclerosis, joint space loss, osteophytes, subchondral cysts predominate at the radiocarpal joint, which is exactly the location of where pyrophosphate arthropathy occurs. So uh, I want to just draw your attention to the term chondrocalcinosis. This is not a diagnosis. It's a radiographic finding, right? It means that there is calcification within cartilage, most commonly fibrocartilaginous structures like the meniscus and the knee or the triangular fibrocartilaginous complex in the wrist, as you just saw in this index case. This can be seen in a lot of things. We always jump to, oh, this is a case of CPPD or pyrophosphate arthropathy, but you can see that it's seen in a lot of things, right? It can just be idiopathic. It can be seen in osteoarthritis more commonly, right? DJD, CPPD or pyrophosphate arthropathy, gout, even gout, Wilson's disease, hemochromatosis, all of these things can cause chondrocalcinosis, right? So when we see it, it's just a finding. We need to figure out what the underlying diagnosis is by looking at the other findings in the case, as we just did in this index case. Now, whenever you have an arthritis case, the distribution is always the king. The distribution of where the arthritis is is always going to be the most telling feature of what the underlying arthritis or diagnosis is, right? So in our case, because the arthritis, meaning the degenerative changes of subchondral sclerosis, joint space loss, osteophytes, subchondral cystic change, predominate at the radiocarpal joint, that means this is a case of pyrophosphate arthropathy, right? DJD or osteoarthritis would be very unusual to occur at the radiocarpal joint unless it's like a secondary cause like post-traumatic osteoarthritis. If the arthritis predominates in the first CMC joint and the triscaphy joints, then the answer is going to be osteoarthritis, even if you have chondrocalcinosis in the TFCC or the lunotriquetral ligament, right? Because again, chondrocalcinosis can occur in osteoarthritis. If you were to have hook-like osteophytes at the second through fifth MCP joints. Well, then you want to think about hemochromatosis, which can also be, uh, or chondrocalcinosis, chondrocalcinosis can also be seen in hemochromatosis. If you add hook-like osteophytes just limited to the second and third MCP joints in the hand, then that would be more consistent with pyrophosphate arthropathy because you can also get hook-like osteophytes in pyrophosphate arthropathy, but they're usually confined to the second and third MCP joints, whereas in hemochromatosis, they typically occur in the second through fifth MCP joints. So hope that was helpful. Uh, hope that, you know, sort of elucidated and demystified some of the types of arthritis, particularly in the wrist. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case. Thank you so much for your attention.